Now we're going to look at brachioradialis of the forearm. Its origination point is off the supralateral condylar ridge of the humerus, and it's going to run all the way down and insert into the styloid of the radius right down here. So it doesn't cross the wrist joint, but it gets right to it. So its main actions are just acting on the elbow. To best isolate it, we want to make sure the wrist is in a neutral position. We'll flex the elbow up a little bit. Again, I can stabilize down here. And I'm just going to pull straight down towards the table. And right away, you can see this muscle light up. Really nice definition on this patient. And we can palpate through it. And it's just a, a check for its ability to flex at the elbow. Notice that if we're in a pronated position, sorry, supinated position, this is going to involve more biceps. And this brachioradialis does not come up as much. As soon as we turn it over, the bicep will be less, and the brachioradialis will be more. And if we want to go all the way down, we can check brachialis one more time. Again, you're still getting a lot of brachioradialis with this, so don't think you're not. Anytime you challenge elbow flexion, that muscle will be involved. It just depends how much. In this neutral position, this is the best way to get it to, to fire. Its main action for the brachioradialis is going to be elbow flexion, as you can see right here. But keep in mind, because of its insertion point down here on the tip of the radius, when we're in a fully pronated state, it will contract a little bit to return you to a neutral wrist position. And then conversely, if we're in a fully supinated position, it will also contract a little bit to bring you back into neutral that way. So it has dual actions based on its origin and insertion. And that's one of the main ones right there for elbow flexion, as well as bringing you back to the midline, whether you're pronated or supinated.